Hey everybody, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Welcome to Friday morning. Welcome to Friday. Thanks so much for joining, friend. Life coaching lessons from snow removal part three is what this is all about. I'm going to give a couple more people a few more opportunities and minutes to join us and uh, got some great stuff for you. Some things I want to share that I feel like will be really, really helpful. Hey, thank you so very much for joining. I do appreciate you and your time. Um, as always, everybody, if there's anything that you hear, um, thank you. That's what I was just about to say. If there's anything you hear, anything you see on the broadcast, do me a favor and just hit the screen and show me some love by sending me some hearts. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People are rolling in. People are rolling in. This is awesome. Ah, I'm stoked. I'm pumped. I'm psyched. I'm jazzed. I'm gassed. I'm excited. Uh, not just because it's Friday, not just because I happen to be a morning person, um, not just because Wednesday was my birthday, but just because, right? Just because. I don't need a reason to be excited. I really don't. I uh, had a great night last night. Didn't get a lot of sleep. Didn't get as much as I wanted. Thanks so much for joining. But I had a good night nonetheless. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for the hearts. So listen, I'm James W. Falcon. Thanks for joining. I'm James W. Falcon. I am an author, motivational speaker, a leadership um I still haven't figured out what I want to call myself, leadership strategist, leadership enthusiast, leadership, I don't want to say expert, but I do leadership-based uh, research, um, presentations, and so forth. Um, I'm an author, did I say that? I'm a poet. Um, I am a call center professional, customer service professional by trade. I build call centers. I uh, recruit for call centers. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining, and thanks for the heart. I train call centers, um, uh, call center personnel um, on the rep level and also on the leadership level. Um, I implement, um, thank you, thank you. I implement um, quality initiatives, uh, performance initiatives. This is all of what I do in the background. That doesn't mean I'm anybody special at all. But what am I doing with this? So in 2010, this is a quick uh, infomercial. In 2010, I had a horrible, horrible meltdown. Thanks for all the hearts, everybody, and thanks for joining. And in the course of that meltdown, I sat right here at this workbench right behind this setup and cried because my life was a mess. I had um, witnessed and suffered through, uh, hey, thanks so much for joining. I had witnessed and suffered through the disintegration of a few relationships that were really important um, and it left me really destitute. I was not in a good frame of mind. And I thought in that condition, the best thing for me to do would be snow rule. That's it. This is it. Snow rule of lesson. This is what we're doing. Life coaching. Um, so I thought the best thing for me to do rather than continue to melt down was to try to think, well, what would I want to say to myself? Hey, y'all, how you doing? What would I want to say to myself? Like, what would I want to say to somebody else who um, found themselves in my same situation? And so I, I created a Facebook page called Cafe Encouragement. It is still up and running. You can see that. And the, the, the idea behind Cafe Encouragement was for me to post little tidbits of information, encouragement, inspirational pieces for people like, like me. I used to be a club hopping junkie, house music, still am. And uh, every once in a while we would leave the club and it's like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And what are you when you leave the club at that late date? You're hungry, right? So I want to go to my favorite restaurant, which here in Baltimore, Maryland, was called the Buttery Restaurant. I'll never forget it. Um, it's no, no longer easy. It's had some of the best food. But we would roll into the Buttery Restaurant at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and order up a whole mess of omelets and grits and something crazy and just gorge ourselves before we all went home and passed out. So I thought about that whole process and how cool that was. Uh, I sure will. I, I definitely will. And uh, thank you so much. And I thought about, you know, when that whole process would happen, how better, how much better I felt after having a full stomach. So I thought, let's create a cyber cafe. Hey, thanks so much. Let's create a cyber cafe that people can roll into 24 hours a day. And instead of ordering food, they would get little tidbits of encouragement from the menu, and then they would move on about their day. So check out Cafe Encouragement. But that was the first step in a process of me building an encouragement-based network. Today, that network is called Encouragement is Key, and I provide encouragement to individuals, to couples, uh, male-female relationship-related uh, problems, and also I'm launching tomorrow, and I'll tell you about that in a second, I'm launching a brand new division of my Encouragement is Key Network that's geared strictly to professionals 
in the work world, and it's geared toward leaders and teams. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. So that's who I am. That's why I'm doing this. Am I qualified to do this? Mm, not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't have any degrees or anything that say, yes, you should be in front of a camera talking to people about uh, encouragement or anything. But here's what I do have a lot of experiences. Good morning, everybody. Sorry if I don't acknowledge everybody's um, thing. Um, and thanks so much for joining. I appreciate your time. So I, I just want to be able to share some things because hopefully in sharing, my therapy continues and hopefully yours will begin. So I just want to add some value to your lives in that respect. Encouragement is key. Life coaching lessons from Snow Removal. Yesterday, my firstborn daughter joined the broadcast. And, you know, I'm a family guy. I have four girls that, ra that range in ages from 9 to 29. I'm extremely proud of my gorgeous princesses. They are incredibly spoiled as I am as their dad. I'm also a grandfather to, to five children. And my second to oldest is about to give birth here any day. Um, so I'm big on family. But um, I wanted to just do a shout out for my firstborn daughter yesterday. Uh, she's just amazing. I love the woman she's become. And uh, I just appreciate her support. Um, on yesterday's broadcast, but I say that to also say this. So she is going to be married in August. She's going to get married in August. She found herself a great guy. Guess what that dude does? The same thing I do, encouragement-based things. He's much better at it. His name is Justin Morgan, and his network is called Future Builders. I'm telling you that because I want you to support him. There's no way in the world that James can be on Periscope for all the hours of your day. So I want to be I, do, uh, I want to do my due diligence to be able to share with you other resources and people that are doing similar things that may be able to present to you some aspects from a different angle that may be helpful. Justin Morgan, Future Builders. Check him out. I also went to high school and happened to know a very great guy, Emmy winner Mario Armstrong. So if you um, don't know Mario Armstrong, check him out on Periscope. He's got a huge following and he's about to launch a new show in September. It's going to be a brand new approach to talk shows. I don't want to give away his thunder, but find him on Periscope. Thank you for joining. Hey, hey there, Studio Kathy. How are you? Thank you. Look, she jumps right in with hearts. Bless you. Um, so check out Mario Armstrong because he's got a really, really good process going and he's developed this thing called the Never, Never Settle Club. So check him out. And then also... Check out a good friend of mine, Alon Is Music, A-H-L-O-N, Is Music is his performance name. His name is Mark. Uh, he is a uh, fellow member of the fraternity that I'm a part of, and he's launching a network of things. He's a music producer, a hip-hop and R&B guy, and uh, hear his story. So for those of you that are musically inclined, even if you're not, just follow him on Snapchat. On, Sna yeah, on Snapchat at Alan is music um, because you, you're going to love his story, his music, and what he's all about. And then Studio Cafe just joined. Everybody, um, next time she does anything, make sure you follow her. I'm putting you out there, Studio, because this woman is phenomenal. She is a photographer, poet. Um, she does some life coaching. Hey, how you doing? She does some life coaching, and she is absolutely incredible. I'm so proud of the stuff that she's doing and appreciate her friendship. So Studio Cafe, who's on this broadcast right here, right now, you want to follow her. Hey, no problem. Least I can do for all the great things that you've done for me. Okay? Last thing I want to do is, and Studio can tell you, um, last thing I want to do is invite everybody to join me for what I call the morning glide. And that's me going to work. So right after I do this, I'm packing this stuff up. I throw my bag across my shoulder, put on my hat and my coat. I'll tell you in just a second. Hang in there. Uh, put on my hat, my coat, and I go to work. And what I do when I go to work is I get really pumped. I put play music. I'm singing to myself, dancing in my car. That is the natural way I like to get pumped and lit. So when I walk into my place of business, I can be in the right frame of mind to absorb all of the things that are going to be thrown my way. So it's just me clowning around, letting my hair down, if you can imagine what the heck that looks like, and uh, me clowning around. So join me if you want to you know, get pumped and get lit for the morning glide. So what are we talking about, somebody just asked. This is part three of life coaching lessons from snow removal. So here in the Mideast, a couple weeks ago now, we had the largest dumping of snow. We had a blizzard, uh, and it was the deepest amount of snow that we've had fallen in this area. I'm here in Baltimore, Maryland. Thank you for the hearts. Um, since 1928. Um, and we're one of those. Maryland is like the northernmost southern state. 
And I say that not to throw shade on the southern states at all, but I say that because we have a very southern mindset when it comes to a lot of the modern day things. Folks, I got some family up in Boston. When it snows two and three feet, they go, oh, this is light, and they keep on going. Not for us. If we hear rumor of a snowflake falling in a nearby county, we lose our minds. All the toilet paper, eggs, and milk are gone from stores just like that because we lose our freaking minds. So you can imagine what happened to us two weeks ago when the snow fell. When the snow fell two weeks ago, um, we, we not only lost our minds, but it took us a few days to get out from under all the snow. Just this past weekend, Sunday, I hadn't shoveled my backyard. So I go to shovel my backyard, and while I'm shoveling, I'm thinking to myself, you know, this whole snow shoveling thing is no joke. People die from shoveling snow. A week and a half, you're absolutely right. People die from shoveling snow, mostly because they're in bad health and they try to attempt to do something that they don't realize is not meant to be an exertion of your strength. It's meant to be something that you use your arms and your strength against the weight of the shovel to leverage how you move different things. But while I'm doing that, you know, and I'm one of those kind of guys where I'm not in the best shape necessarily, but over the years I've learned I can shovel all day if you let me. Hey, how you doing? And uh, so I'm, 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 I'm shoveling myself out and I'm thinking, there are some ways that you should approach shoveling snow. And I'm thinking that those ways may have some universal applications to some other principles in areas of our lives. So that's where this is, why this broadcast is, what I'm trying to promote. And um, I think it's relatively unique. I don't know if anybody else is doing anything like that. I'm pretty unique in the sense that where else are you going to find in America a black man sitting in a pink chair with a floral backdrop? I mean, come on, really? Seriously? I'll tell you about the pink chair and the floral backdrop a little bit later. It has some significance. So I like to try to take unique approaches. Hey, how you doing? To different things. But I want to, I want to bring value to your lives. I want to bring encouragement. So today's lesson. By the way, go to my YouTube page a little later on today. You'll find this broadcast, excuse me, as well as the first two that will be out on my YouTube channel. Follow me on that YouTube channel at James W. Falcon, okay? All right, so today's principle, somebody from Russia, shout out to you from Russia. Thank you. Today's principle is called top down, not bottom up. Top down, not bottom up. So picture yourself with a snow shovel in your hands. And for those of you that are in warmer climates, just Try to visualize this, okay? I realize that you all don't have the joys and the experiences that we do here in the Mideast of the white stuff, but it's nuts, but it is, it is, uh, it's, it's gorgeous when it falls, but it is a pain in the hind parts to get yourself out from under the snow. So picture yourself standing there on your porch, in your yard, or doing whatever it is you're, you know, wherever you are, trying to shovel your front, Right? Um, so what, what, how is it going to work? Here's what a lot of people make the mistake of doing. This is how people die. This is how people injure themselves. This is how people have to go in the house because they're holding their back or their arms or their chest are hurting. Because here's what people try to do. They take the snow shovel and they go as close to the ground as they can and they try to lift up piles of snow on a shovel. And then they try to move that and throw it somewhere. Okay? Thanks so much for joining, y'all. Wrong. Why? Because if you take a look at a snowfall like we just had, and by the way, for those of you here in the Northeast, they're talking about something similar coming. Hey, how you doing? They're talking about something similar coming this coming Tuesday. So what I'm about to share with you in these life lessons for snow removal, brother, sister, you might have personal application again if you are a resident of the Northeast. Hope not, but let's see. So what they try to do is they get a whole shovel full of snow and then they try to toss it somewhere. Now, you got to check out my first two steps of this whole process because if you don't take the right approach, if you're not dressed properly, and if you haven't planned how this is going to go, hey, go to Moscow. I get, I, I get it. Can I speak a little slower? Okay, I'll slow down. I'm a little excited. You're absolutely right. So what people try to do is, is they get, they try to scoop as much out as they possibly can, but you can hurt yourself when you do that. So here's what I found is a good principle. If you got one, two foot of snow. Think about that in layers. Think about taking the top layer off and then just start working down from that section that you're working at. Again, top down as opposed to bottom up. If you try to scoop all of that snow up and you do that a hundred or however many times it takes you to get a path going from your steps or your walkway to your car, you're going to hurt yourself. 
What's the application to other areas of your life? A few things. Number one, take whatever it is you're planning to do. And How old am I? 46 as of this past Wednesday. Take whatever it is you're planning to do and cut it up into thirds or fourths right away. If you've got a plan to write a book, if you've got a plan to prepare a presentation, then say to yourself, okay, I'm going to give it three to four weeks of solid application, execution, and so forth. That's always been a good way to excuse me, approach things from my perspective, so I just want to pass that on. Yesterday's lesson was about planning. What we tend to do with planning is we tend to make it too complicated. So here you are standing in the snow. Say to yourself, based on the snowfall, if you've got one to two foot of snow in front of you, say you're going to cut that in thirds or fourths. You're going to quarter it. So you take the first layer off, the second layer off, the third layer, and then you scoop the remaining amount up and throw that. That is key. Hey, thank you so very much for joining. That is crucial. Why? Because this snowfall was so deep that the little bit of property I have, considering the snow that was on that, I mean, it took me two days to dig out. I mean, that was just the front. I told you. I was shoveling out the backyard just this past Sunday. I hadn't even touched that. So I was out there for hours when you think about that. If I try to scoop a large amount of snow on a shovel every single time, no more back, no more chest, no more arms, I'll be done and I'll be sitting in somebody's physical therapy unit somewhere if not having gone to the ER for chest palpitations. I mean, it's, very, it's a very real principle. So take that. Look at whatever you're doing. Cut it up into threes or fours and attack it a little bit at a time. Remember, what I shared yesterday was crucial, just like an, a life application principle. Snow removal should not cause you to be anxiety ridden. It should not cause panic attacks. A lot of times when you carry that principle from snow removal over into something that's applicable in other areas of our lives and leveraging the weight of the snow with your shovel to move it rather than try to be Hercules and think that this is all about strength. If you take these steps, I don't care what your stature, weight, size, height, build is, anybody can be a snow shoveling removal king or queen and get the job done effectively regardless of your stature. Now, I'm 6'3 and a half, 270. I, I, I tend, I, I'm a little bit bigger than average, right? Um, it's not about brawn. It's not about size. If it were, I would go into snow removal business. It's not about that. It's about leverage. It's about careful planning and execution. It's about making sure you're methodical in your approach. It's about making sure you bend your knees, have the right posture with your back, but it's also about doing it from the top down and not from the bottom up. Listen, I hope this has helped you. Thank you so much, everybody. I prize your time. I prize you. As I share on my Morning Glide broadcast, I don't typically drink coffee. If you see James W. Falcon with a cup of coffee in my hand, I've had a horrible night, and that's rare. Uh, I don't do coffee. I, I, I get high off of life. I'm a morning person. My morning starts. I'm looking at my clock right by, behind the count. The, uh, the, uh, what's this thing called? Phone. Um, I'm looking at the clock on the wall, and it's 730. I've been up since 2 a.m. I mean, that's, that's just the way I roll. Every day I get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking about things like this, thinking about my family, you know, whatever it is I'm doing, that's what gets me pumped. So by the time I get into my car, which will happen in about the next 15, 20 minutes, I got my colon, the music goes up, and I'm getting into that zone necessary for me to start my day. Join me. I'm going to be periscoping like crazy. My network, uh, encouragement-based network, has multiple divisions. If you're just joining I've got a division that's going to be launched tomorrow for leaders and teams. What is leadership? What's it all about? How can leadership be a really effective tool as it relates to working with your team and seeing the productivity of your team soar? I'm going to talk to you about that. That's a division. I do male-female-based relationship uh, programming, presentations, and so forth. I want to see those connections get strengthened. I hope to be part of what hopefully can start a relationship revolution between men and women. I'm a father of four incredible girls, so I'm always talking, obviously, from a male perspective, but with an incredible sensitivity of the female psyche. Why? Because my daughters are training me well. 
Um, I can't. I, I got to tell you, I love my girls to the point where I know in my life in 46 years, in the years I've been a parent and now a grandparent, that I am learning much more from them than they are from me. And I know for those of you who are parents, you can appreciate that. So I got a number of different divisions, and I'm going to be scope. Thanks so much for the hearts. I'm going to be scoping all of these divisions because I want to bring them to the planet. Get some dialogue going, but more than anything, I want to be able to add value to you as you are adding value to me. So Periscope, you're my cup of coffee. Thank you for being who you are. Hope your day is productive. And hey, y'all, celebrate. You made it to Friday. That's a big deal. Don't take it lightly. Don't underestimate or undervalue yourself. And I'm going to close out the broadcast as I always do with these three things. No matter what you do, no matter how you do it, get, be, and stay encouraged in all of it. And I will be in front of you soon. We're going to resume these broadcasts. I'm going to do two more sessions on Monday and Tuesday. We'll close out this series, but we'll have plenty more series to do. Check me out on my blog page. I know I said I was closing, right? I'm lying. Check me out on my blog page, Encouragement is Key. Go out to the internet. Just type in Encouragement is Key. That is my brand. My name is my brand. If you go out to Google and just say James W. Falcon, type that in, you'll see what I'm saying. But if you want to know the right now in the moments things like where is James, what is he doing, what's the next project, you can go to my Facebook page, Encouragement is Key, to find that information. Now, hey, y'all, Friday is calling. Let's get into it. Make things happen. Get out of it so we can enjoy the weekend. Y'all take it easy. Thanks so much for joining.